Welcome back to class. My name is Loy, your image expert, and this is Loy's coaching class. Today is a different session altogether, one that we have not had in quite a long time, I think in about four, three months. I posted on my different social media platforms to every member of the class to ask a question about personal image, and we got so many questions. I hope we have enough time for each one of them, but I'm gonna to try to do my best. So why not, don't we hop straight into the class and get those answers? So welcome back once again. It's so delighting that you are there watching on YouTube, through TikTok, through Facebook, uh, you know, the class members on WhatsApp, the class members, you, you know, who get to log in uh, through Instagram and Twitter. Thank you all so much for attending class. And from different parts of the world, we have now grown to like 22 countries where we are, and I know that more students are getting more students to join the class. Today, we have questions to answer, like I, I said earlier, and I'm gonna start with the first question. So I put this up here, so I don't have to hold, you know, gadgets in my hands or my notebook and I'm gonna read from there so we have a question coming in from Tina she actually asked two questions I'm gonna start with the first one and she said what matters most how you feel about yourself or how others feel about you now uh, Tina this is an amazing question and in the video that I did maybe two three weeks ago where I said mirror mirror who is the fairest of all that question is very eligible for any person at any level of our lives we ask ourselves is it more important how I see myself or feel about myself or how others see me or feel about me? One thing for sure is that, first of all, the way you feel about yourself is objective to the truth of who you know you are. Unless you are lingering around the truth, yeah, you don't have facts about you or truth about you, then it's going to be subjective. But you are very objective. You know the truth of who you are, either on the outward or the inward. For example, you know your stature. You know, you know what you can do and what you can't do in your human ability or strength within yourself and outside yourself. You know what you're capable of. You know how far you can push yourself for that matter. That is very, very important. Think about it. Even the God who created you and gave you so much within you does not push you actually. Did you realize that God lets you do things until you feel like you need to go extra or do an extra. Then you go to him and say, God, I need an extra push on this one. So it is very important what you know and believe and feel about yourself more than what others uh, think and believe and feel about you because it is subjective. Someone today is going to wake up and say, oh, wow, you look great. Like as though every day of your life you have not been looking great. Yes, you put in an effort every day to try and keep yourself camp to dress well. Today, they might, you know, what is it called in HR? They might uh, evaluate your performance at work. Today, you might be the best and you'll never be the best in like a year. Does that mean you're not performing? You are actually performing. It's just that not to your HR's expectation or the company's expectation, but you are performing. So you realize that it's going to be very different every time how people perceive you, what they feel about you matters so much by how they, what they think of you. So you don't have to live your life on the side of people think this, people feel this. No, it's important that you care how they feel but it's not important for you to live your life depending on how they feel. Does that make sense? So you need to live your life according to how you know yourself and how you feel about you. The next person to impress is definitely God. And then once you know you're doing the right thing and impressing God, it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or not, your creator has more and more authority over you, then humans have to follow along. You know, and you have to teach all of us that, hey, I'm an honest person. So if I don't like it, then I will not be your friend or be with you. And if I like honest people, then yes, we are going to hit it on. So you cannot keep saying because you're in an environment where people like thieves, you're going to start stealing. You get away from that environment, you go to liars, you start telling lies. You leave that environment, go to where people eat a lot, you start eating a lot. I mean, get your own beliefs, principles and fundamentals build on those if you have those that the bible talks about get those and still identify yourself with those and then whoever can come into your life agrees with you or doesn't agree with you and it doesn't matter yes yeah? so i hope i helped you 
you need to care more about and live your life according to how you feel and envision yourself. Because only you know where you want to go, honey. Nobody else does. So they won't care so much, yeah? Number two is quite sensitive. And I'm going to say, why does society judge a book by the cover? That's the first part. And then she goes on to say, especially when a person has piercings on their bodies or tattoos. The first half of the question is, why do people judge others by the cover? It's in human nature to judge. You know, once sin came into our lives, we started to understand good and evil. So we know good from wrong. We know good from, from evil. We know, we know right from wrong as human beings. And that is something that we cannot live without. You know, we're going to have it as long as you have a conscience, you're a human. You definitely have the spirit of judgment or the, 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 the sense of judgment within you. But this is what it is. How do you use that judgment either on yourself or on others? Do you judge them for their good or do you judge them to just judge them? Do you understand what I mean? Like someone who would punish a child not to educate them but to hurt them. So do you judge people just for the sake of judging and enjoying their differences, even yourself? Because believe me, it's very minimal that what you do to others, you don't do to you. Because it comes from you. So how do you expect us to believe that you actually don't do the same to yourself? So when you are, have a sense of good and evil, right and wrong, use it correctly. We are all different in different ways. And all our differences make this world a better place and help us to, to understand the diversity that God created among men and women. And it's very important that we appreciate those differences without finger pointing and saying, oh, because the other person has one limb, wow, I am much better than them because I have both. But you can find that God put all oh, whatever he would have put in these limbs, he put in their head and they are amazing thinkers. They have wonderful and great ideas that you will never have in your entire lifetime. So it's, it's very, uh, very important that we understand that we shouldn't be quick to judge others and ourselves, especially when it's not based on principle of either good or evil or right or wrong. And in the world today, right or wrong and good and evil is very subjective to different environments, to different parts of the world, to different beliefs. So either way, you have to probably have a little extra sense, which is from the Spirit of God, to discern and know. If I'm calling uh, wearing makeup evil in this part of the world or among the people today, Am I just the one being an outcast? Because makeup is not evil. But depending on the occasion or how someone has made it, it puts them in a certain class of life. So if, if, if just to compliment this answer, Tina, about being judged by the cover, there's a video that I know you have watched before. But for any other person who is attending class today, there's a video that I did one of my, I think it's like the second video, scroll through, and you'll find a, a video that, that has a title, Allow Yourself to be Judged by the Cover. It's only five minutes, and it's going to help you to have a better insight. Now, concerning piercings and, and tattoos, uh, the Bible is very clear for those of you that are Christian and I know it's a very big debate in the Christian fraternity But first of all, let's understand what's the history of tattooing and piercings. Yeah, very, you know, far ago Very very far ago. I don't know if that statement <laughs> makes sense or even exists long ago 1903 1920s 1930s there was slave trade. Yeah, so every master had to mark their slaves because they were putting them on the ship to sell them either from Africa to Europe, England, or from the US to England. So every slave owner had to mark their slave either on the forehead or right here on the hand just to say that this is they write the name of your master. If your owner is called David White, they would write that name. David White on your hand so that if you died on sea or fell sick or got lost they would always read and contact David White and tell them that your slave is in this location or they are on this ship okay so that mark was actually a tattoo of that name and others would actually do different piercings and they would make you wear different kinds of jewelry just to mark you to know that this person belongs to this person in the same way, when the children of Israel were in Egypt during slavery, they also were marked. 
they did different cuttings on their bodies and different piercings to represent different occasions and, and times. Especially when they were mourning, they cut their heads bold, yeah? They cut their heads bold and they, they put uh, they, they put cuts on their bodies just to show that they are in pain, it is sad what is happening. The other thing that was happening, was being done through piercings was like Rebecca, she was endured with jewelry on her ears, you know, and put on her forehead. And so her ears were pierced. But that's a different situation altogether. Now let, let me just share a scripture with you to, to, to quite help us understand uh, what exactly it is. So this is the book of Leviticus, it's chapter 19, and I'm going to read my uh, version, which is uh, King James, yes, but I'm going to make it better as well when I read NLT. Uh, let me quite find it here. Um, give me a second. Okay, I got it. So let me first read from the King James Version. I'm going to read chapter 19, verse 26 to 28. You shall not eat anything with the blood, yeah? Neither shall you use enchantment nor observe times. You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. Mark that, that's verse 28. Any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Now, King James has quite complicated English. Let's read it very simply from the uh, New Living Translation. Leviticus 19, 26 to 28. Do not eat meat that has not been drained of its blood. I think that's much easier. Do not practice fortune telling or witchcraft. Okay. Do not trim off the hair on your temples or trim your beards. Do not cut your bodies for the dead and do not mark your skin with tattoos. I am the Lord. Those laws the Lord gave to the children of Israel. Okay, when they were back from slavery, on their way actually to Canaan. I'm not, I'm not a theologian, so don't over judge me on this. I'm just a Christian, I love my God and I read my Bible. So, when God gave them instructions to stop doing those things, those were the things they were doing before when they were in slavery. Now they have a new life, they are free. There was no point in them continuing to practice cultures and norms of slavery. So God told them that. This is one of the scriptures in the Bible where God actually mentions it very vividly concerning, you know, putting cuts in your skin and piercings on your, on your body. In the symbolism, like I gave you the history of slavery. So that has been revolving or evolving over the ages. In the 19th century, it became something completely uh, fancy, you know, people do it to express themselves, to quite send out a message. If they have a loved one, they will put their name on their skin. If they love a certain flower, they put it on their skin as a tattoo, you know. If there's an animal they love, they do it. Let's say on events like Halloween, people like to tattoo their bodies. And it doesn't mean the tattoo where they cut your skin. But even just the drawings and paintings. We're going to share some pictures and I know you should be looking at them right now. Just those even drawings and paintings, they are all called tattoos because they're embossments on your body. And God discouraged that from the children of Israel because of the memories that it carried for them. So if you choose to become a new person, yeah, and come out of a certain situation in your life and say, I want to adopt a new identity, there are laws and rules that apply. Today, when somebody, given in Africa, let's say, even as in Africa, by the way, you look at the Karamojongs, some tribes in Ethiopia and Kenya, East Africa, we have people that would create really large holes into their ears and have those round, uh, uh, de what can I call them, uh, decorations or, you know, silvers and gold jewelries and ornaments, and they put them in there. They would wear long jewelry, see like the earring that I'm wearing, you'd see like, no, you're talking about it, but you also have pierced ears. Exactly, you know, because it's, it's evolved over the years. That in some communities it's extremely done, in some communities it's not, ex it's not extremely done, just done normal, you know, for beauty and all that. So there's another place in Exodus 21, 5 to 6, where it says, But the slave may declare, I love my master, 
my wife and my children. I do not want to go free. This is a slave talking to their master, yeah? If he does this, his master might pre must present him before God. Then his master must take him at the door or doorstep and publicly pierce his ear with an owl. After that, the slave will serve his master for life. You realize that that's a mark again of slavery and life commitment to serve another person. This is what I'm going to say. This is a big subject, but this is what I'm going to say. At least we have covered the history. We have seen how it has evolved over the centuries up to today. What is your motive when you take a tattoo or pierce your ear? Anything concerning your body. Remember, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, so you need to take good care of it, and it doesn't have to be defiled. When you go to take those piercings, the, the pins that are used, whatever they use, the tools they use to cut through your skin to create that tattoo, are they cleansed? Are they sterile? Are they clean? Because the tattoo itself might not cause you to sin, but whatever tools have been used, if they are not sterile, if they have somebody else's blood on them, if they are not clean, then it means that you're going to, to bring damage to your body, either through disease, sicknesses, or you're going to lose the cleansing that you have as the temple of God. Your motive is very important. Is it out of peer pressure? Is it to hurt somebody? Is it to prove a point that you have a tattoo? Is it to fit in? Why are you doing it? That is very important because whatever we do, the Bible says, we need to do it for the glory of God. So I am not here to say it is right or wrong. I only want you to think about why. When you're taking the tattoo or when you have it, it's already on your body. We can't change that until you die. Why did you take it? If the motive initially was not right, yeah, then you now put yourself in a place of, okay, God, I already have this. I want to change my reason for having it. If you do it for love of another and then you break up with that person, you have their name, you cannot go and start scraping your skin, you know, uh, uh, off, take, take, scraping that name or word or heart, whatever sign you put off your skin. You're going to have it for the rest of your life unless you redesign it to something else, which is more pain and, 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 and more costly for you. But if you can endure, that's okay. I just need you to always caution the motive of doing anything, okay? Just caution the motive of doing anything. And go back and research from the Word of God. Start to learn the history. Some people wear anklets, others wear, you know, we wear different jewelries on our bodies. And those jewelries represent different things depending on the worldly measures, yeah? Different cultures wear them for different purposes. Please find out so that you don't embarrass yourself. You don't want to wear a ring on your pinky and you don't understand what it actually means. When you go to an environment where they know what it means, it's going to be... Uh, quite embarrassing for you if you're not intending to say that message. So your motive is very important. Why are you doing it? Yeah. And remember, we do everything for the glory of God. And the third thing is have knowledge about what you do. So Tina, I hope that exhausts. In case you have any questions, please don't fail to revert. I need us to re be reminded that we need to subscribe to the channel. We need to like you know, this video or any other video that you find useful on the channel. Don't forget to join the class through Facebook, Lois Coaching Class. We have a very large following on TikTok, but there I use my name and Instagram and, and uh, where else? Twitter, yes, and LinkedIn. So don't forget, please put a thumbs up to this video and leave your comment. Let's go on to the next set of questions. These questions are coming from Conrad. Uh, Conrad is a class member from TikTok. How can one help uh, to drop bad traits? Bad traits are an adoption. Okay, let me take it back from the beginning. In the uh, Bible, we were birthed out of Adam and Eve, yeah? And sin came into the world. So meaning every person <laughs> has a seed of sin within them, okay? Naturally. So definitely as we grow up, after you're born, as you grow up, you're going to uh, uh, attract or adopt both good and you're going to attract and adopt both uh, an evil as well. Yeah. So as you grow up with the knowledge that you get and cautioning and, and teaching, you decide to choose. Do I want to live this life or do I want to live this life? So bad habits, just like good ones, are adopted along the way as someone grows up. Okay. Um, the choice to have them and keep them and nurture them and, and advance in them is entirely up to an individual. 
either because they have not learned otherwise they have not seen otherwise they have not probably even received consequences from those bad traits let's give an example if a bad trait is let's say using foul language maybe that person grew up in an environment where they use foul language and they have not been exposed to an environment where they don't use foul language if that person ever learns that there is better language than what they're speaking and they fail to adopt to that good language then it's a whole different case altogether if they allow themselves to change and understand oh wow there is a better way to speak there's a better way to communicate than using this other language let me learn it but they have to desire it they have to admire it they want it they need to want it because you cannot change and become another if you have not wanted to so one thing that someone needs to do to drop bad traits is first of all acknowledge that they're not good either for them and are affecting other people okay and maybe will affect their future in a long run and their relationships with people around them so acknowledge that's the first thing that this that I know this that I say this that I do is not right and then you say what is the solution so go ahead and find somebody to talk to you can consult experts like us to help you through that journey you can if you're Christian or any religion go to your holy book and find those answers what does the Bible what does God say about this uh, you can go ahead and look online and say okay if you're a thief what is the opposite of being a thief you ask before you take something or you work and earn it yeah so then you start to work towards those changes but you need to then change the influence around you externally because you're making a decision internally to change and stop being that person it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone around you is going to agree with you some people might actually drive you to back to where you're coming from so you need to also scan your environment outside and say okay which friends are going to support me on this journey tell them your cause and then let them start walking that journey with you you can find a counselor you can find a coach you can find um, definitely you can get send me an email it doesn't matter what habit it is some of them are even those habits that are um, addictive you know addictive habits that you are now addicted and you're hopeless about it but it can still go so we just need to make sure that you agree that it's not right and then the journey starts from there so I hope I have answered that one Conrad uh, the second one is uh, is being proud about yourself a bad thing hmm being proud about yourself is not a bad thing depending on how you use it with or amongst other people let's take a work environment if I have been declared the employee of the month I have to pride in it I have to delight in it I have to pat myself on the back and say oh Lord that was amazing remember everyone in the organization is like yeah well done lady you did it you are the one in the math every client that walks in looks at the notice board of the company as they walk in and they see my picture they see the nice message from my immediate boss or supervisor and I am you know celebrated so my behavior and reaction towards that whole thing is what is going to become bad someone will say i drink and i stay in my room i don't say anything bad i just sleep with my you know wine on the head or alcohol on the head then they'll ask you so how did i sin another one will drink and then go on abusing people so what does that mean like the Bible says what comes in does not cause you to sin but what comes out of you is what causes you to sin so the good things you do that make you feel good about yourself and and lift and elevate your self-esteem are not the bad things but how you react towards them you know is what makes it bad so you need to always be very careful in the moments in your life where you are at a high place choose to be internally very low it will give you time to settle into your emotion and that kind of excitement and then give your brain a chance to think of a positive reaction otherwise you're going to go around telling everybody i'm the best in this company nobody can ever work like me you know um you think you can do it you can't do it when they bring in a new person to work you say hey where did you come from i have been here for 10 years nobody works better than me you're not even going to survive in this business now that is not good but remember when you are working so hard to take in uh, to to do that thing that puts you in that place that activity and then you were credited it was it, it was taken in by you now what is coming out of you is what is going to really really make your pride uh, bad <laughs> the delight you have in in yourself bad so be very careful how you react 
when you have been put in a place of elevation or uh, of, of praise and wow, you know, that moment, it's very important. Don't forget that when you do something to others, it's going to come back to you. And the principle on pride from God is that he will lift the lowly and he will humble those that are putting themselves in high places. So be very, very careful not to go against that principle. Conrad's last question is, which one is the fruit of the other? Is it ego or pride? Pride comes along, you know, as we, 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 we develop in life. Ego is in there. It's either just smooched and nurtured to grow or it is sabotaged and killed. It is mostly in our male, you know, species, the men. And it is something that is within them that swells like a peacock. If somebody has seen a peacock, if you haven't seen a peacock, then let's take an example of a turkey. You know, when a turkey swells and it starts to, to, to show you that I'm the big one here, you gotta run. If you have a red thing on, run for your life. That is how an ego is. But when you find that uh, a peacock is just gentle like a, a hen or a chicken, you can never think that it's egoistic, yeah? even a peacock, until it swells and swells to its throat everything, its eyes are popping and then it's even changing the way it walks. Now that is what ego is. It is there. Every person has it. Even women have it. You know, it just depends. But mostly it's a trait in men. But it's a natural thing. It's, it's something that we are born with. Now, ego and pride, in terms of external exhibition, they are not easily differentiated. So as your image expert, the advice I would give you is that you need to live a life of dignity. Dignity is quite different from respect because this you give to yourself. Respect other people give you the respect. But dignity is bigger than just respect, okay? It lives longer than you. A dignified person is a person that lives a life by the principle. A principle you have created by yourself but also principles that are underlined by the word of God or instructions given to us by our creator. Because like I told you in the previous video, there is nothing, no law or rule that man has created that does not come from the Ten Commandments, okay? So even as you set the statutes of your life and principles, please make sure that they are not far off but are within the Ten Commandments. So live your life with dignity and know that this is how I live. So it will not be prideful if somebody knows that before you enter Lloyd's office, you need to knock. No, it's just a principle knock before you, you are you open for or before you get into any door. It's just polite that you have to knock. Uh, the way you walk, the way you treat other people, you know, dignity is very special. So instead of coming across as an egoistic person or proud person, I would rather you are exuding dignity and that is what you need to work towards. Two more people and the next one is Flavia. Flavia asked a question about personal branding. Uh, she doesn't quite understand what people say mean when they say personal branding. Personal branding is not different from personal image uh, but the difference becomes Personal branding is more out in the marketplace and personal image is more of yourself, okay? Work on you. Uh, personal branding is the conscious intention for anyone to put in an effort to position themselves as the best at what they do in their area of expertise or industry. For example, I choose every day to wake up to position myself as the image expert. I'm the best at what I do concerning image. And the confidence comes from the knowledge that I have about the subject. The confidence comes from me being an author about the subject. The confidence comes from the ability for me to deliver the knowledge that I have. So if I had to use this to, to lobby for a job or a contract, definitely I would because I would say, hey, I have a YouTube channel, I have a book, I have spoken in so and so's life, I have you know, impacted this organization, I have done that. When you choose to, F, uh, to intend to cautiously say, I am a technology person, I am a networker, I am a decorator, I am a, 
a mother, I am a, a, you know, what do you do? I'm an engineer, I'm a lawyer, I'm a content creator, whatever you do. And wake up every day to intend to be the best at it. Position yourself as the best at it. Then you are developing a personal brand. Like Coca-Cola did, it positioned itself globally to say we are the best. It doesn't matter what they produce, people say it kills or what, but they position themselves as the best. So any other beverage company or soft drinks company that arises over the years, Coca-Cola has always been Coca-Cola. I believe even if they stopped advertising, they will forever be Coca-Cola. So in case I stop doing videos, would I still, my name be out there like I'm the best at this? If they were looking for an image expert, is it me they would look for? So that is basically what personal branding is. If they were looking for a teacher, Flavia, as a teacher, would they look for you? You know, if they were looking for an expert in history and geography, is it you they would look for? Now you need to start positioning yourself as the best. You need to start to promote yourself as the best. And once the promotion comes in, then you're now putting everything out there and saying, hey guys, I am here. That's why companies go ahead to, to put color and shaping and texture, even employ public relations officers to quite take a word out there for them that, hey, we are the best at this, we produce this, we do that. And then everybody will know, oh yeah, color blue, yeah. They meant, oh, I like the green one. Oh, I like uh, the, the red plastic chair. I like this. They will identify you by the, the brand image that you have put out there. So personal branding is basically you to consciously intend to put in an effort to position yourself as the best in your area of expertise in the marketplace. Wonderful. Now we have a last uh, question from uh, Julianne and she, I'm going to find it here very quickly, very, very quickly. But in the meantime, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Remember to like this video. Remember to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click on that notification bell. You don't forget to follow on, on Twitter, Instagram. My name is Lohe Kwagala. Don't forget to join the class uh, through, through Facebook. That's Lois coaching class. Here's Julian's question or statement. One of the best. I don't know how, it, you know how to term it, but she says it's consistency. I have seen it work in some areas of my life. However, I have lacked consistency in some areas. And I feel bad about it, that somehow I feel it affects my image. I don't even know if I should ask this question or just have to discipline myself, which I have failed to do. What enhancements or ways can one help, can one, can help one to be a consistent person? Uh, thank you so much, Julian. In there, you have mentioned very important aspects and factors. For example, discipline, that's very important. Uh, trying is very important so this is what we're going to do when there's an area in your life anybody this is not only for Julian but for anyone attending class now when you want to be consistent at something for example it is not in my greatest interest honestly guys to really be physical I mean in terms of exercising you know I don't have a uh, uh, physical routine that I can tell you I jog twice a day I wake up in the morning I go to my bike and ride it and do this and do that I won't tell you that I am more of a needs person when my body feels a certain way I go ahead and do that exercise to suit that need yeah when I feel like tired or maybe I'm, 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 I want to sleep, it's time to sleep, but I can't sleep, then I'm going to say, let me tire myself by either playing some music and I just dance or I get my rope and skip or sit on my bike and ride for a couple of minutes until I feel like I have worn my body down to give it some rest. So I can't really put myself under the pressure of I should be exercising. I should also have routines when it's not within you. My blood group, oh, we are not very exercising people. So with that knowledge, I understand why I don't really feel the need to have a routine to do it every day, but don't be lied to or fooled. I do exercise, but I'm very focused. It's cardio, it's my, uh, because I sit a lot, I do a lot of those exercises for the back and for the upper chest, like I showed you in one of my videos, you can look it up. Uh, I do a lot of, uh, 
you know leg work i do a lot of arm work you know i have my dumbbells for those of you that missed that video it's how to get rid of a hatch of hatchback pains i do those but those are my simple here and there that i need my body needs i don't do them out of everybody does it so if there is a habit or something that you want to start doing because it's the norm everybody does it you're not going to be consistent because it doesn't come from within you then you need everybody's motivation to keep doing it but if it's a personal thing let's say it's it's concerning your work you know motivation to 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 keep doing this task at work then there you have to now tell your brain that hey this is a work requirement you better do it let it not be fun, let it not be interesting, let it not be an award-giving activity, but a responsibility. Even when you say, I want to start exercising or eating uh, on a certain diet or you know, doing something, uh, you need to, if you fail to do it for fun or because you like it, make it a responsibility. Put it on a timer and say, every time this time, this is what happens. Does it necessarily mean that every day you're going to be on time? No, for practicing purposes, you might miss, be five minutes late or early, but you're still going to try and do it. Do not be religious when it comes to practices of your life, but be disciplined. Today you might fail to actually do that thing. Try so much to do it tomorrow. The body is an amazing mechanism. It's a good machine, it's a good tool. When you make it used to something and eventually take it away, it will adopt to the new thing that you're bringing in. When you do something twice a week, it will also know and know that every twice a week we receive this. If they are beauty habits, you know, your skincare habits, your hair care habits, your grooming habits, if it's performance at work, little things that you need to do, submit documents on time, you want to, to, to you know, give in your reports before the end of the month, you want to try and be on top of everything. Those are habits that you have to cultivate. You need to find a motivation. Either responsibility motivates you or your own interest to shine motivates you. So Julian, consistency is only going to come out of you understanding why you're doing something and the results. Keep the eyes on the goal. Keep the eyes on the prize. Like the Bible says, I run the race with patience because I want to win the prize. I want to get that mark. So there's a lot of things we come across in our journey of salvation and life. Sometimes you want to faint, but you have to have the consistency of the Christian practices, isn't it? You don't pray every day, but at least you try to pray and be in communion with God. You might not be the one that fasts consistently, but you try whenever you have a chance to, because you know the prize is, is the eternal life that you're aiming at, and you don't want to miss it. So keep your eyes on the prize, Julian, and anybody else that is struggling with consistency, and you will take those baby steps every day to do that activity until you perfect it. Uh, do it excellently, nothing perfect. You do it excellently and then win the prize. So create a prize for yourself. If it's a personal achievement, I want to lose weight, create a prize for it and say, I'm gonna shop for myself the best anything, size eight. If I come from 16 to eight, I'm gonna do that. Then look forward to that prize. And then have somebody to be accountable to in that journey of consistency, okay? Someone that will remind you, hey, did you do this? Did you do that? Do you remember? Can we go to gym together? Oh, by the way, I just finished to prepare my diet. Have you done your meal? Did you eat already? It's bedtime. Weren't you sleeping? I have people who do that to me a lot. And I have to explain every day why I don't sleep. You know, the time when every normal person should be sleeping. <laughs> so, but I like that they are there to keep reminding me that, hey, it's bedtime, it's bedtime. Although I will not actually sleep then because I have to do some work, but it's, it's good to have them. So that's the time we have for, uh, keep the questions coming. Definitely will be, I can always throw them in so that we don't have 10 hours of, of just answering questions, although it's very useful. So thank you so much for attending class today from wherever you are attending. I hope that I have answered you. Uh, the other questions that I have missed doing in this video, please do not be dismayed. I'm gonna definitely record them some in the lesson next week now about next week yay next week is going to be different it's a special week for those of you that are in class today let me give you a sneak peek next week uh we will have our class on thursday and in that class we are going to be hosting somebody yes we're going to be hosting it's actually my first class to have a student not a student well she's my student as well <laughs> but she's way older than me and she's an amazing person and that's 
Mrs. Victoria Sich Toleko. So for those of you that are in Uganda, you know she's a former Minister of Agriculture. She's an influencer as a mother and as an inspiration to so many women globally. Uh, there's an amazing story that I need us to share together, but why am I inviting her? I'm inviting her because it's my birthday that day and I want her to talk to all of us within my age group. So if you're wondering, but Loy, what's your age group? You seem to be probably 12. Exactly. If it is 12, then she's going to speak to us as 12 year olds and even uh, older 12 year olds. So please stay in class for that. Next week is going to be exciting. And I'll keep reminding you in the course of the week. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, attend class and join class through Facebook, Loy's Coaching Class. Those of you that are on TikTok, yes, definitely you are attending class. Thank you so much. All over the world, mwah, hugs and kisses. Thank you so much. And I'm forever humbled and honored by your attendance. God bless you and cheers. Bye.